Hi, I'm Scott the Miniature Maniac, and in this video, John's painting my miniature, the Duchess. Great Scott. Right, um, let's get to it. Now I bought the Duchess online, like so many other people have done, and I must say I really like this model. I mean, it's got smooth, interesting lines to it. It's got this certain elegance to it that I find really intriguing, especially considering how many demon and grotesque monsters I've been painting of late. Now, if by some weird circumstance you found my channel, but have not seen Scott's Miniacs channel, links are down below for his channel, of course, where you can find videos on awesome paint jobs, awesome tutorials, and also somewhere in the collection, how he came about creating this model. We're going to start out by painting the dress. We're going for a really simple paint job on the Duchess. But it will look great, because simplicity does not mean you are not focused and you're not trying. Simplicity can be good. And here we have the box of the model. It's, uh, it comes very well packaged, and some candy to go with it, which is always nice. I have that for later. And quite a simple task opening the box and lovely sticker coming along with it. And of course, the model itself. It's a resin model, quite a good uh, print, sculpt, everything. It's clean and nice, hardly any flashing, a little bit of warping on the blade, but that's easily fixable. I just wash it up, Zenith will prime the damn thing, and we start painting. We're going for a quite simple paint job on it, simple and elegant, because the model has a simple pose, elegant pose, elegant flow of the dress and everything, so we're going for simplicity over complexity. And we start with a Corvus Black, and we're just whack blending a black red into that. And for the entirety of the dress, we're only using this color, uh, the Corvus Black, the black red, and then adding a little bit of verdigris into the red later on. So it's only three colors and a little bit of shade, and that makes up the entire paint scheme of the dress. Like I said, we started out with uh, black and then wet blended a little bit of red into that. Now we're just highlighting and feathering in a little bit more red just to give it a little bit of extra punch. And as you can see, we did that also on parts of the upper torso area. And now we're going for the focal points of the dress. And this is a redder red than the bottom bit. So we start with the black red as a base, then we add a little bit of verdigris. And because it is a blue color that we're adding into the red, we get this hint of a purple to the color, which makes it uh, look quite nice on this model. It gives it a velvety, royal, noble feel to it. And then we're just highlighting it a little bit. This is mainly just done with many, many layers of thin paint and wet blending and we can get this excellent result where everything looks kind of nice, even if I do say so myself. Those ribbons going from her belt, going for the redder color there as well, because it gives it a little bit of contrast, and there is a lot of darkness going on in this model, in my paint job at least, and that's okay. It can be dark, there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to be careful not to make it overly dark because it, then it doesn't really read. So a little bit of highlights here and there and it'll look a lot nicer. And on the shoulder pads, uh, we have to do it a little bit different. We are not wet blending as much. We are, however, wet blending a little bit, but uh, we're doing it quite a lot more contrast to it. We're getting a little bit uh, starker difference between the shadows and the highlights there because it's got the ruffles to it and we want it to pop a little bit more and this is closer to the face and this is closer to the top of the model so it is a natural focal point. And then just highlight it a little bit and we're done with the ma majority of the dress. 
taking a little bit of null oil here and putting that into the recesses. We're not going overboard with inks or anything like that because this is such a dark trash to begin with that a little bit of null oil is enough to make it even darker and give the little bit of shadows that we missed later on going over the buttons into the creases everything like that and you get uh, natural looking shadows to this model now that the dress is all done let's work on some metallics Again, we are going for a simple paint job. Nothing too fancy, but it'll look good in the end. Now we are going to paint the metallics. And since the dress was such a simple task to paint comparatively, we are going for TMM, not NMM. Mainly because I like how the dress went, came out, and I'm not really that good at NMM, and I want this to look nice and crisp and clean and beautiful. So we're going for high sheen and uh, TMM for this. We're using the Silver Air from Vallejo. I love that paint. It goes on so smoothly and it makes such a lovely bright sheen to a color. So we're putting that over all the metallics and there's a lot of trim here and there and buttons and everything. So there's a lot of small details which really tie this model together and give it a little bit of extra oomph. And I like them. It's fun to have all these silver details on such a dark and gruesome model. So after we've put down all the metallics, uh, the silver, we're going to go over everything of it with uh, non oil, darken it down a little bit. First pass is just go over everything, find out where the shadows are. And then after we've gone over everything, we're going to go over it again. But this time we're going to focus on deepening the shadows here and there, where there would be more shadows. There we're going to add a little bit more non oil. And we're almost doing a TMM feel for the sword. We're going to put some on the entirety of the blade, and then we're going to focus it to make a little bit of extra sheen later on. And as you can see, now we are focusing on putting it in more of the recesses, more of the places where the light won't hit it. We're going for deeper shadows here and there on the back sides, especially because we're going to have the illusion that the back is not in as much light. And like I said, we're just dragging a little bit of black here and there on the sword. Adding a little bit of flavor to the silver now, we're going to put some uh, blue shade as well. Also, just in the main creases on the back side, in the shadow, everything like that. Give it a little bit of extra flair to that bright silver. And after we finish putting some blue in here and there, we're going to start highlighting it up again. And again, on the sword, making some sort of almost TMM paint job with NMM. No, the opposite. An NMM paint job with TNMM. Because I know what I'm doing. Yep, sure. And now we're highlighting it up again. We're just going for a little bit of edge highlights and where the light might hit it the most. And it's a simple enough thing. Just going into the lines. Be careful not to go overboard with the highlights because it'll lessen the effect. If there's too much highlights, you don't get the feel that it's real. So just where we want them. And it's the same base color, so it'll blend well in with everything we've done before. And keeping it around the edges, leaving those lovely shadows where they are, because they need to be there. And for the sword, we're just going from the tip and then feathering it up. And then we're also going to edge highlight the sword. It'll be a bright sword, but it won't be flat and dull. There's going to be a little bit of flavor to it, which is fun, in my opinion, at least. And of course, etching the sword. Be really careful when you're doing all these small lines that you don't go overboard and just stay calm and breathe in and breathe out. Now, it has a lot of silver, but we want a little bit more flavor to it, so we're adding a little bit more gold that is not in the art that I'm using as a reference, just for a little bit more flavor. So we're putting gold on the hilt and the pommel 
and later on we will also be doing some jewelry on the actual duchess in gold as well and then just a little bit of government flesh on the gold it gives it a warmer hue and i like that and then we're going to highlight it by adding some silver into the gold and just feathering it on and layering it on giving it a little bit of extra sheen as you can see finding a focal point and using that and getting it bright and crisp and it looks really really good i must say it looks quite fabulous this sword now and shiny and happy now that we've done the dress and we've done the metallics now we're gonna focus a little bit more we're not going quite as simple there are a little bit more nuanced techniques in this bit but the face is a focal point and it's the main character of the model so we have to focus a little bit more and spend a little bit more time here and there and now we are closing in on the end but we have the final details left to do and of course the skin and the face and the hair so we start out by painting a rough it's going to be a wide rough so nothing too complex here we start out with a little bit of gray adding then a little bit of white and verdigris into the gray and we're just highlighting it up with layers we're not wet blending this we want a little bit of contrast between the shadow and the highlights and a little bit of blue tint to it to make it a little bit stand out from the dress which is of course more of a red dress as you can see and then just white highlights on the uh, most uh, portions of this uh, white rough and it's done simple and easy but looks great on the model and now the face uh, we're gonna focus uh, a lot of energy on the face because it's the main focal point of the model we're starting out with a uh, uh, incubi darkness mixed with slender gray and we're mainly using these two colors and we are wet blending them and mixing them together on the palette as well and one side of the face is going to be in more shadows the one side that is facing away from the front because her head is tilted to the side so a lot more incubi darkness there a lot more shadow there and we're using very 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 thin paints and we are using a lot of layers a lot of thin layers to get a smoother highlight going and it has to be ugly before it looks good so we are full well in the ugly face at this point trying to find our beauty in the ugliness and like i said just thin layers again and again and again feathering them out finding some sort of smooth paint job within my rough paint job because i'm not that much into smooth paint jobs as people might have noticed but it's a fun exercise to really focus on trying to get things smooth or as smooth as you can so we're just highlighting it another layer and another layer and another layer because we need a lot of layers to get this thing smooth. After we highlighted so much of the model, we have to focus on shadows in a little bit. But first, a little bit of teeth. And trying to draw out those fangs to make it show that she is a vampire. And then, of course, we have to do her eyes as well. Now, I'm not a fan of painting eyes. They always go wibbly-wobbly when I do them, and these did as well. But we're going to fix that up with putting a little bit of eyeliner on her with a little bit of black. Just go around the eyes. They're a bit sunken, but she is undead, so that is okay. And because this is such a large-scale model, I'm going to attempt to do pupils with some really red color. And it worked out okay. She's not too cross-eyed, she's a little bit cross-eyed, but not too much. And then, like I said, a little bit of uh, blue shade, just putting it near the corners of the hairline, by the ears, a little bit around the eyes. Not too much and not too thick. If it's too thick, it's gonna really, really stain the model, and we really don't want that. But we want a little bit of more shadow there, a little bit of more flavor. And she's got this blue skin, but it's more of a purpley blue skin. And the shadows are going a little bit more blue. 
Now the hair, that's going to be wet blended quite a lot. We're just starting out with putting some black in it. And then we are going to take some gray, which is just the black and the white mixed together. And we're putting that into the black and dragging it back and forth to make it a little bit nicer. And then after we've done that, we're just going to put a little bit of white on the brush and just go over the front bit. Uh, the strands of hair in the front to give it a little bit of extra highlight and it looks good The hair hair is excellently sculpted on this. It's got a lot of strands to it So this was quite easy The strands of hair really grabbed the paint of the brush and it looked awesome And of course like I said she has some jewelry on her head on her hand and uh, Yeah, so we're gonna put some retributor armor on that and this is the same method method that we used on the hilt of the sword a little bit of a little bit of contrast paint and then adding silver into the gold to get those lovely lovely bright highlights on it and there we have her the duchess I personally really enjoyed painting this model. It's quite elegant in its simplicity and uh, that's uh, quite a big change from what I'm usually painting which is a little bit more rough, a little bit more dirty. This is simple yet has this complex element to it and I personally am quite happy and proud of the end results. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media and various tidbits. You do with it what you will. Like, share and subscribe. And in the words of Scott the Miniature Maniac, paint more minis. But until next time, farewell. <laughs>